Having an ideal blood pressure is vital to leading a healthy lifestyle. An unhealthy blood pressure, which can be caused by cholesterol, stress, or substance abuse, can lead to stroke and or heart attack. There are two different types of blood pressure, systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure. Systolic blood pressure is when your heart is contract and when the blood is being forced through your veins. Diastolic blood pressure is when your heart is relaxed and refilling with blood, typically a lower blood pressure. These blood pressures are given in fraction form, with your systolic pressure given on the top and your diastolic pressure being given on the bottom. These blood pressures are typically measured in millimeters of mercury, which is a measurement which is defined as the amount of pressure needed to lift mercury one millimeter. So, how does a computer inside of a blood pressure monitor actually work? Let's find out. When you first turn on the machine, it begins to inflate the cuff to a baseline pressure of 180 millimeters of mercury. Then, the computer sends a signal to the valve to begin deflating the cuff at a steady rate. Then, the computer will then measure the pressure at the first time that the pressure of the blood exceeds the pressure of the cuff, which registers a change on the sensor. Then, as it, as it continues, it will then measure the pressure at the last pressure low. Then, it will display the heart rate and the blood pressure on, on the display for the user to see. Then, if the user so chooses, it'll then store the app reading in memory in the flash memory on the chip, and then an auto shutoff process begins. So, uh, this is a graph of what the computer sees basically through the process. This red line is the arterial pressure, that's your blood pressure, and this blue line is the cuff pressure. You'll notice up here that the pressure of the cuff is much higher than the arterial pressure, which means it's exceeding that pressure, and there's no change in the in the sensor. You'll notice right down here, though, this is the first time that the arterial pressure exceeds the cuff pressure and so this way the computer knows this is the this is the highest uh, amount of pressure in the blood which is your systolic pressure then as it continues it goes down 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 to the last time that the diastolic pressure actually uh, registers a difference on the sensor this this way the computer knows this is the diastolic pressure this is the lowest pressure after this the pressure of the cuff is lower than the blood pressure, so there's no change in the sensor. The blood pressure monitor senses your blood pressure with a range of 5.3 kilopascals to 37.3 kilopascals. It also measures your pulse with a range of 40 to 199 times per minute. For our specific blood pressure monitor, an analog sensor was used to sense the pressure, specifically a capacitive pressure sensor. If we take a closer look at the capacitive pressure sensor, it essentially has five components to it. A silver metal plate, a copper plate, a brass-like plate, a silver metal encasing of sorts, and a brown plastic piece. The flat silver metal disc was soldered to the copper diaphragm. The two together were then fitted inside the brown molding piece. As air flowed through the little nozzle on the backside of the brown piece, it moved the copper diaphragm back and forth. This changed the distance that the silver metal disc was to the brass plate, which in return generated the capacitance that the monitor relies on to take your blood pressure. The bottom graph is a 50 gigahertz signal from the microprocessor. The top graph is the output plot of the capacitive pressure sensor. These five plots show how the input signal of the microprocessor is changed with varying capacitance values. As the pressure increases, the capacitance value increases as well. This increase causes a more sawtooth pattern in the output of the capacitive pressure sensor. By monitoring the degree of the sawtooth pattern, the blood pressure inside the body can be determined. We will now take a closer look at each individual part of the heart pressure monitor. The air pump begins to push air into the plastic tubing connected to the armband. The air then moves to a junction, as shown by the blue arrow. The red arrow indicates an emergency valve which will release air in case the armband does not stop inflating. The air then moves into the cuff, which inflates until the senses that it has been properly filled. Then, a valve periodically releases air to slowly deflate the cuff. This is known as an always open valve which will remain open so long as there is no electricity supplied to it. This is to ensure that the cuff will deflate in the event of a power loss. Finally, blaze the systolic and diastolic blood pressures on the screen. As you can see, there are a lot of components to the PCB, some of which include microprocessor, 
capacitive pressure sensor and crystal, polarized capacitors, unpolarized capacitors, diodes, resistors, integrated circuits, a USB connector, some pin connectors, and on the back there are tactile switches which basically act as buttons. You can buy all these components online from sources like DigiKey and Alibaba, but you cannot buy the PCB as it is. You'll have to assemble it yourself with the components that you'll buy. The PCB basically consists of conductive traces that connect the electronic components of the board. The actual PCB itself is typically made up of layers of the solder mask, copper, and substrate, which is usually just fiberglass. A schematic is first designed on a program like Autodesk's Eagle and then printed out on some transparent sheet. The PCB is covered with a photoresist and attached to the printed schematic. The photoresist is then hardened through UV lighting. The leftover black ink and unhardened photoresist are removed by bathing the PCB in a chemical solution. What's left over is sort of like a negative of your original schematic. Afterwards, the copper that is not covered by the hardened photoresist is chemically removed through an etching solution, like aqueous ferric chloride, to create an exact copy of your design. Finally, necessary holes are drilled in for the PCB components and then soldered in. A silk screen is typically put on at the end, which is that white text you usually see on PCBs. Today on How It's Made, blood pressure monitors. It looks simple. But wait, there's more! This surprisingly complex device has several classes of components. Injection molding, electronics, pumps, rubber tubing, springs, and plastic sheeting. Several of the components can be acquired from online sources like Alibaba in mass quantities and do not need to be made new. These include the pump, plastic tubing, circuit board, and LCD display. The blood pressure cuff can also be ordered in mass quantities, but it has an interesting manufacturing process. It is made by heat sealing two rubber sheets together to form a flexible band. A tube fitting is incorporated into the sealing process, providing a connection for the air supply. The housing of the monitor is made through the process of injection mold. Liquid plastic is injected into an empty cavity. The external mold is then removed, revealing a complete part. Draft angles are used so that the part easily releases from the mold. The blood pressure monitor can be modeled in CAD, such as Onshape, and then 3D printed as proof of concept. Then, you can upload the file to a website such as Protomold for a free quote and injection molding feedback. Several tricks are used to save on costs. Buttons can be made with thin plastic attachments to give them pressure. Also, teeth can be put on the housing to allow for a snap-on fit. 